James pulls his weight. James the Red Engine have been having a difficult day. The trucks played their usual tricks and delayed him, and then James had to shunt the coaches for his passenger train, making him later still. Arrived back at the sheds, feeling exhausted. After those horrid, dirty trucks caused me nothing but trouble, I had to shunt my coaches. I didn't leave on time thanks to those wretched things, James griped to Gordon and Henry. Gordon and Henry were sympathetic. However, Duck, who had just arrived, was not so kind. He knew James was no stranger to complaining about jobs he didn't like. What are you boiler aching about now, James? Haven't you learned that shunting and pulling trucks are necessary jobs on the railway? Why, we great western engines do our work without fussing. Hey, be quiet, quackers. I've had a long day, hissed James. Anyone would think, replied Duck, that you're afraid of hard work. Pull your weight for a change. James snorted and rolled into his shed without another word. Next morning, Sir Topham Hatt came to see Duck. Some important goods must be taken to the works. Donald will do your usual work. Yes, sir, replied Duck eagerly, and he puffed away. Duck collected the trucks and was soon on his way. He was making great time when... Oh, bother, cried the fireman. We forgot to take on water. Sure enough, Duck's water tanks were nearly empty. The driver quickly stopped the train. There's a water tower at the next station, but we won't be able to get there. While the guard ran up the line to the next station to get help, the fireman dampened Duck's fire. A little later, the guard returned, on James with a passenger train. Duck watched curiously as James reversed in front of him and was coupled up. Duck's guard spoke to the driver. Instead of dropping you off at the water tower, making you later still, he explained, James will take you all the way to Crovin's Gate. He's stopping there anyway. We'll have to hurry, James, said the driver. Our passengers must be on time, too. James agreed. Soon, everything was ready. The guard blew his whistle and James took off like a rocket. Puffing hard, he quickly brought the train up to speed. Duck was caught off guard. In no time at all, James was flying along the line. He dashed by fields and under bridges a red streak. James sped through Wellsworth Station in fine style. Good work, boy. Keep it up. He charged at Gordon's Hill, puffing even harder to drag the heavy load over the top. Duck was sure the noise could be heard for miles. Mustn't be late. Mustn't be late, James muttered as he strained his way up the hill. When he got to the top, he whooshed on the other side so fast that his crew had to hold him back. Easy, old boy, the driver chuckled. We still have to obey speed limits, you know. The train continued to run at a fast pace. To Duck's surprise, James didn't complain once. Soon, James arrived at Crovin's gate with his strange train. The driver and fireman looked at the clock and cheered. James was confused. Why are you cheering? We're right on time. James looked at the clock and he was right. They were. Duck was very impressed. I'm sorry I said you were afraid of hard work, he apologized. That kind of effort is certainly the Great Western way. It's all right, I suppose, James smiled smugly. Just remember how hard working I am next time. Soon another engine came to move Duck to the water tower, and James continued on his way. Duck still gets tired of James's attitude to trucks and shunting sometimes. But from that day to this, he's never told James to pull his weight again. <laughs>